Hey there, everybody, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Rama, and in today's video, we are finally breaking into the long-awaited Cluckin' Bell heist. This is something that I've actually been really excited for. Not exactly for the payout. I mean, obviously, making money in Grand Theft Auto Online is quite easy with the Kyoko Rico heist, the agency... All the ways to make money are usually going to be better than these small little heists that Rockstar adds because they know the Kyoprika was already kind of busted. But in terms of vehicles, completing the Cluckin' Bell heist will give you the Gauntlet Interceptor, which in my opinion is one of the coolest looking vehicles in the game, and I have been waiting and waiting patiently to get my hands on the car. So in today's video, I'll be telling you everything you're going to want to know about this heist, how to complete it as efficiently as possible. Let's start off very briefly talking about the payout. Completing this heist for the first time is going to give you $500,000, and then you're going to get an additional $250,000 for your first completion bonus, depending on which take you've done. So you will get $750,000 for the first time you do this heist. Then every subsequent heist you do after is going to pay you $500,000. However, I can't imagine you're really going to bother doing this again after you've completed it the first time because you've already gotten the main goal of unlocking the car. To get started with the storyline and doing the setups for the Cluck and Bell heist is very easy. Just log into an online session and wait about five minutes. Vincent is going to call you on the phone and he's going to say, Hey, I'm no longer working for the casino, as you know, but now I'm working for the LSPD. Hop over to the Los Santos Police Department and you can start doing the setups for the heist. Now, there are five setups in total, the final one being the heist. So there's not an incredible amount of things you need to do but they are time consuming. It took me about an hour and 10 minutes to get everything done from start to finish. And obviously, once I've done it the first time, I could probably shave that down to about maybe 40 minutes, but still, it's gonna take you a decent amount of time to get everything done. So hopefully this video helps you out. You can start all the setups by making your way to the Vespucci police station, which you can see right in front of me. Now, the first setup does involve you going through a cutscene, which is rather annoying. I have done the liberty of getting rid of the cutscene for the video, but yeah, you're gonna have to sit through about a three minute cutscene with Vincent telling you why he's no longer working for whatever, why he hates the Cluckin' Bell. Obviously, uh, you'll watch it, so I'm not gonna make you watch it a second time. As you can see, there are gonna be two locations marked on your map, A and B. You are going to have to hit both of these locations, so it doesn't really matter which one you head to first. What you're going to do once you get into these locations is really simple. You're just going to kill a bunch of guards, and then you're going to steal the counterfeit cash from the washing machines. It's literally that simple. I would highly recommend to use either an Armored Karuma or a Duco Death which is completely free to do these missions because there's no explosions involved with any of the missions. All you're going to have to deal with is guards. And, I mean, you can see how easy it is to do these missions with the Armored Kuruma. So you're going to kill the guards outside of the money laundering business. You're going to hop inside and steal the money out of the washing machines. And you're going to do this for both of the locations. It is incredibly easy. This first mission should take you no longer than about five minutes. You can see the money that's sitting around here. So you just kill the two guards inside walk over to the money laundering machines and we steal the cash you're going to do this for the other location and then you're literally going to drive over to vincent drop the goods off and congratulations you have finished the first setup after completing each mission, Vincent is going to call you on the phone about a minute after being in a lobby, and he's going to say, hey, you can start up the next one. So usually what I start doing is just driving towards the Vespucci Canals police station, waiting for Vincent to call me, and then I'll start it up. This second mission is also quite easy. You do need to pay a little bit of attention, because if you're not, you might get blasted in the face, but for the most part, it's super simple. So you're going to see there's a couple drones around the terabyte that I've driven to, and you just need to destroy the drones. But you're going to notice that the second wave of drones actually have weapons on them. I mean, they don't deal that much damage. You can see they only deal about maybe 10% of your health each hit. But the thing is, is that it keeps spawning more and more drones. So I was like, all right, you know what? I'm going to pull out a shotgun. And I would highly recommend to use a shotgun because it's way, way more efficient at taking out the drones as we can see. 
So, there's a couple waves, but once you've destroyed them all, it's pretty easy. I didn't even need to use snacks or armor until I killed them all. And then once you hop inside the terabyte, there's no guards or anything you have to deal with. You're literally just going to steal the hacking device, and you've completed the first part of this mission. Then you're going to want to make your way over to the carnival docks. And over there, you're literally just stealing a computer. There's going to be a guy playing on an arcade machine you can see right here. And all you do is take his computer and leave. It's that simple simple. Vincent is then going to call you on the phone and tell you to head over to the cartel's compound. Here you are going to steal a train, but it's one of these classic missions where one of the guards is containing a key and you have to kill a bunch of guards until you find out specifically which one is carrying that key. Once again, the Armored Karuma or Duco Death are fantastic vehicles for completing this as you're never ever going to die. It's so nice that you can use cars like this though because, I mean, as you can see, I can just sit right out in the open, kill a bunch of guards, and uh, once one of them has the key, we take it and steal the train. And the coolest part about this mission is you are actually able to drive the train. Yes, you heard that right. We are hopping right into the conductor seat, and we are gonna steal the train. I don't know why Rockstar doesn't do more cool things like this in other missions, but yeah, this is actually epic, and uh, it's just actually really cool that you're able to take the train and leave. Now, you are gonna have to activate some rails while you're driving the train but honestly i didn't even slow down i think the game wants you to but it's gonna say the hacking device can be used to switch the signal lights and i didn't really care about that you're just gonna see it's gonna tell me to press right on the d-pad and i do that and i don't even slow down so it doesn't seem to have affected me all too much so yeah pretty pretty simple stuff and obviously you don't even need to slow down. I didn't use snacks once. Any of the cartel members that goes in front of you, you can absolutely obliterate with the train. For example, there's a truck in front of us. Not anymore. Yeah, it's actually pretty fun. You're gonna have to drive the train for about two to three minutes, but uh, apart from that, there's not much else you have to do here. The third mission involves you taking gear and weapons, just like how the Kyo Preco Heist, you have to steal weapons so you're not traceable, even though you're not going to die and you're going to keep the weapons on you, which I've never really understood. But as you can see, there are three different locations pinged on the map, A, B, and C. A and B are in different areas of Los Santos, and C is at Sandy Shores Airfield. I would highly recommend to go to location C. I went to A first because it was the closest, and I wasn't sure if we had to go to the other two. And when you make it to location A, there are only weapons, there is no gear. And because of that, you will still ultimately have to go to a different location, most likely B if you go to the city. It's way easier to pull out a vehicle like the Duco Death or Armored Kruma, make your way over to location C, kill the guards there, and get both goods. And not only does Location C have gear and weapons, but it has the best weapons, being a combat MG and a shotgun, which is definitely what I chose to use, ultimately, in the heist. So yeah, definitely go to Location C. It's going to save you time, and it's just a much better area to go. Once again, Rockstar being very original, setup number four brings you to three different optional locations once again to pick a getaway vehicle. Now, the game is going to show you a picture of the different cars you can steal from different locations. I just chose the closest one because I'm pretty lazy like that, but if you have a specific car you like, then go to that location to get the vehicle. I'm just going, as I said, to the closest one that was near me. Once again, using the Duco Death or Armored Kruma is going to make this an absolute cakewalk, even though there are probably 20 guards around me, it just doesn't really matter. You can see there's also some explosives around me, so that's why I did end up choosing the Duco Death for the majority of these missions. Just in case there were any explosives, it's pretty good to use the Duco Death, because this car can survive upwards of four to five explosions, where the Armored Kruma ultimately isn't going to survive any. After killing all of the guards at this location, you're going to see a little electrical box at the top, which I'm pretty sure the other locations will most likely have as well. Destroying that electrical box is going to open the garage door so that you can steal the car of question. Then you're just going to drive over to the location, drop it off, and congrats, you've completed yet again another setup. This next mission is actually quite a challenging one. The first thing you're going to have to do is hack a cartel van. This is really easy. Just stay directly behind the van. Even when they open the doors to shoot at you, they're not going to be able to do anything. Then all you want to do after hacking one of the vans is make sure to take the suits. You can see them right on the ground here when they leave the van. It takes about half a second, so I definitely recommend to do this, especially if you want to enter stealth. 
After putting on your Cluck and Bell suit, you're going to want to make your way over to the cartel's garage. This is where, at least in my opinion, the mission gets a little bit challenging. There are four delivery trucks around you, and what you want to do to start off is disconnect their... something. I don't really know what you're disconnecting, but essentially, you're stopping them from working. So you're gonna go pull some cord out of it. Yeet! And there you go. That truck is disabled. You gotta do that for three more trucks. If you're wearing the Cluck and Bell suit, you're not gonna be spotted by any guards. To be honest, I'm not 100% sure how I got detected. It's possible the guards can see other dead bodies kind of like how the Cayo Preco heist works now and uh, they'll alert the dead bodies to their friends but as you can see I just kind of bop certain guards in the face and then I continued on disconnecting the trucks this only took me about a minute to do as you can see after disconnecting the trucks, you are going to want to make your way to the lockers in the back of the building. It took me about two minutes of drilling through lockers until I found which specific one had the key in it. I'm not sure if the little bags you get out of the lockers give you money. I have absolutely no clue, but you can see on the map that there is a little money icon on the lockers. However, I got completely unlucky and uh, did not get much. But it says additional loot can be stolen from the lockers, so I don't know. I, I took all the loot that I possibly could from the lockers because I figured why not. However, it didn't really give me anything that I'm aware of. After stealing the card, all you need to do is leave the area and escape the cartel. In other words, you just gotta drive for like two minutes. It's really not that hard to do, especially if you have a pretty fast armored vehicle like the Duke of Death or Armored Kuruma. This is gonna be a pretty easy cakewalk. The mission is a little challenging for the first time because you don't really know what you're doing, but once you do it, I'm pretty sure the second run through and especially the third run through is gonna make it really, really easy. So there you go, mission passed. Something I should point out is that you don't get paid all too much for these missions. That was only $8,000. Yeah. And the other ones you don't even get paid for. So completing these missions themselves, you don't get paid. It's just the finale that gives you the payout. Speaking about the finale, we have finally arrived at it. We're going to start by entering on a train. Now, because we have angered the guards in the previous mission, as we can see, the cartel is already alerted to my existence. They're going to close the gate on me, which doesn't really matter. I don't even know why they closed the gate, because we're going to shoot it open in just a second. You can see the combat MG is pretty good here. I actually used the shotgun for the majority of killing the guards inside the building, though. It's quite nice because you can just blast them, even if they're behind cover, and usually you'll headshot them. And the other great thing about the shotgun is you don't use your MG ammo. They don't give you that much ammo to be honest. 1500 rounds is not a lot. So I figured I would conserve a lot of the machine gun rounds I have. After making your way through the building just for a teeny bit, you're going to make your way to the first door that you're going to enter and try to get some coke. You're going to head downstairs and what I do is I just pull out the grenade that I have in my inventory Throw it down the stairs, just like that. It's pretty dang easy. And as you're gonna see, I'm gonna kill two guards doing that. There's only gonna be one guy left who survives the blast. So we finish that guy off and boom, we gotta steal the Coke. There are a bunch of different Coke spawns you have to take here. I don't know how all this Coke's fitting into my small duffel bag, to be honest, but after taking that Coke, you're then going to make your way about 10 feet into the next doorway, which is going to make you hack yet again another door. You don't really need to do anything. You just put the key card in and then you walk inside of the Coke storage area. Uh, I killed the guards first just because there were quite a few. I didn't want to lose too much health. As you can see, the shotgun's pretty good at clearing them. Then boom, we enter inside of the storage area and we have to steal more coke. Honestly, I'm not really sure why we're stealing coke. Like, somebody can let me know in the story, like, behind this, but, like, I don't understand how this helps Vincent at all. But either way, you're gonna see that it says you don't have the required equipment. And if you walk all the way to the back of the storage crate, you will see a crowbar on this little crate back here. After grabbing the crowbar, you are then able to walk up to the crates and open them up. You only need to take two cokes out of the crates, so it's pretty dang easy. Boom, thank you very much. After finishing with that, you're going to continue making your way through the factory. Obviously, you're going to kill a couple more guards. There are guards that are going to constantly spawn behind you, and you can see that here. To be fair, they only carry pistols, so they're not that big of an issue, but they are rather annoying. Once you make your way to the office, shoot the lock on the door. It took me a couple minutes to figure that out. Just shoot the lock on the door. It's going to instantly open the door for you. Turns on the alarm, which doesn't really mean anything, judging that the alarm's already going off. 
And then you go into your weapon wheel and pull out the hacking device. Now this part of the mission is pretty lame, because there's going to be guards constantly spawning on you. And while that's going on, you've got to pull out this hacking device, and you have to look. So as you can see, I've got it here in my inventory, and it's basically like the Kaioprico heist where you got to find the money hidden around the map in the scavenge mission. So you're going to use that hacking device. You got to find three different locations with it. It shouldn't take you too much time. They're all in that one little area there. After that, you're going to unlock the safe with the code that is given to you. And you've basically completed the heist at this point. I mean, it's really not that hard, as I said. Yeah, you're going to need some snacks, but apart from that, you're basically done. At this point, we just have to get to the back of the building. So as we can see, I'm just going to shoot at the cops here. I almost died a couple of times here. You can see my health got quite low, but I figured, well, I've got the snacks. So I might as well just run and ignore a lot of the guards. So I'm just going to keep using my snacks and my armor here. Yep, I'm going to keep getting shot. It's unfortunate that you don't get like a grenade launcher or anything that would be really nice for clearing these guys. But yeah, I just ignore them all. Like there's going to be people out there that take their time shooting the guards. Just have enough snacks saved up that you don't need to. So I'm just making my way as quickly as possible to the back of the building to get to our getaway vehicle. I'm not sure if getting shot actually loses you any money. You can see like there is an animation of like money flying out of the back of our bag, but I don't really think that's the case because Vincent pays us, so it doesn't really appear to be much of a problem. After killing all the guards, you're going to get to the back of the garage, hop into the getaway vehicle, and at this point, all you have to do is lose the cops, make sure the cartel doesn't kill you, and you have completed the mission. I would personally suggest to take the train rail as your mode of transportation to not only escape the cops, but not deal with the cartel at all. However, you'll notice something rather odd. Trying to drive on the train rails is nearly impossible. I am not a bad driver, and yet look at how hard it is to control this vehicle. All I'm trying to do is drive in a straight line. If you're in any car, even in this vehicle, I tested it after completing this heist, you can drive on the train rails easy, no trouble whatsoever. What Rockstar has done here is I'm pretty sure they've made it so that if you drive on the train rails, the vehicle absolutely sucks at driving because they specifically want you to suffer driving on the highway. I still weather through the storm. If you're a good enough driver, you can keep the vehicle controlled and you can drive just a little bit slower. As I said, you won't have to deal with any cartel members on the train tracks whatsoever, so it's way easier and it's much faster to lose the cops this way. Honestly, these missions are pretty easy to complete. It only took me about an hour to do them from start to finish, and that's with every single thing added together, as that's my raw footage on the recording. However, you could probably shave this down, as I said before, to about 40 minutes, maybe even faster. I took my time trying to figure out where I was going, what I was doing, but after figuring it out, this is fairly easy. The only problem is that I can tell you for a fact that this will get incredibly repetitive. And judging that the payout isn't anything impressive, it's not all that fun. I would say for the first time doing it, it's not too bad at all. And I'll give Rockstar credit, these are unique missions, they're fun. But as I said, I wouldn't really recommend to do this over and over. So there you go, we got a $500,000 payout. And then also when we get into our lobby, you're going to see an additional $250,000 thrown into our account for completing the specific aggressive approach. So if you do different approaches to this heist, you are going to get a different payout. So there you go, that 250 thousand extra dollars. At this point, everything's done, and we have also unlocked the Gauntlet Interceptor, which is the major thing that I was personally excited to get my hands on. So let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about the Cluck and Bell raid. Was it worth the wait? Honestly, I'm just excited to review this car, which I'll be talking about in the future. So, as always, hopefully today's video helped you out. This took a lot of time to edit, to do, to get everything set up properly. So please consider smashing that subscribe button down below, especially for getting it out so early. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.